welcome to Modern Anarchy, the podcast featuring real conversations with conscious objectors to the status quo. I'm your host, Nicole. On today's episode, shamanic practitioner, indigenous traditional healer, and doctoral student, Akin K. Lucas, joins us for a conversation all about reclaiming the Afro-feminine energy. Together we talk about decoupling feminine energy from gender, the need for consistency in our spiritual practices, and the gift of rootedness within community. I really appreciated Akin K.'s knowledge in the tales of feminine spirituality, I know that we have a lot of listeners on this podcast who have reached out to me through DMs on Instagram and other on Patreon and other ways to talk about how, yeah, y'all have equally experienced some spiritual trauma from our upbringings and religion and you know that I have had my own fair share of interesting experiences with Christianity In terms of my spirituality, I was told as a woman that I have to go through the authority of a man because he was closer to God and that a woman could not be a preacher or leader in the church. And there's a whole history of discounting the power of women in organized religion. And that's why, at least for me, it has been so powerful to read one of the books that Ken K mentioned during our conversation, right? Women Who Run With Wolves, which is all about the various cultural traditions and tales about the feminine power and I would highly recommend checking that out for anyone who feels called to and it's all about the wild woman archetype uh, which is connected to the intro song for this podcast. I did not know about this book when I had originally created the podcast and wanted to use the wild wild woman song as the intro but hey look at that all things are just aligning and unfolding in my own journey and yeah it has been really powerful to see myself in a different light through a spirituality that is inspiring rather than causing harm or making me feel weak. So, and also, and King K talked about the importance of consistency in our spiritual practices. You know, that is our soup that we are meant to make every day. Y'all will understand we get into that later. And um, I just wanted to mention that one of the things that I do for my own spiritual practice is that I journal three pages every morning, whatever is on my mind. It originally started from the practice from The Artist Way, which is another great book I would recommend. And I've kept it ever since for the last uh, two years now. And it's powerful. It's a mirror to your own head, you know, the thoughts that are running through there when you take the time to write down, you know, what you're feeling, what's going on that morning, and also the power to direct those thoughts, right? Maybe I spend some time journaling on what I'm grateful for. Man, that has been the most healing thing I've probably ever done is focus my perspective on the good things in my life and not to discredit the bad and the reality of the yes and to all of that, but perspective is really important. And so I've definitely found journaling to be one of those healing spiritual practices for me. And so, you know, Akinke brings up so much about trusting the intuition and finding those rituals for you with intentionality. And I hope that all of you listeners out there, find something that is resonating with you from a King K's message. And whatever that is, I hope you honor that. And I hope you take up the call to take those next steps to integrate them into your own rituals and find your own practice that brings your spirit life. I really think our understanding of spirituality should be the things that give your spirit life. And it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. So just honoring whatever that is for you and leaning into it today. Y'all, I hope you enjoy today's episode and tune in. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Do you have any questions for me before we dive in? Nicole, tell me about yourself. Yeah, oof. I am just a human in this world doing my best that I can do to love everyone and figure out how to bring more joy and pleasure into the world. I um, study sex and relationships, so that's really like my area of focus. And then I'm getting my doctor in clinical psychology. So I'm in school right now, very much so. In oh, you it. Have uh, no, 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 no. It's just a lot of people from some, how did we get here? I think Dr. Jolie, 
who I talked to about polyamory okay. sent me to some people from Pacifica, if I believe that was the correct route. And then a lot of people from Pacifica chatted with me. And then like, there's just been like a f- full threads from them since all the guests get to nominate who comes on the show next. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and I, I love that. It's very fun when I let go and then the universe just brings me whoever's supposed to come on here. So it started with polyamory, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. have a gathering of folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and sexuality, I think, was like the big thing. Technically, the first episode I did was canasexual, which was all about like how smoking cannabis can help like bring you mm-hmm. into more juiciness with your sexuality. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just I just I smoke, smoke weed. Uh-huh. I know you said cannabis, but we know I'm I'm old school and I'm from the hood, so we're gonna say weed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't accept it all. <laughs> yeah. I don't smoke it, but um I know a lot of people do. And relaxation, yeah. which I think um is very important when you're bonding and connecting with someone else. Yeah. Um, which is sexual in in general is the highest form of communication. So if you're able to let your guard down just a little bit. And allow all those inhibitions to come out, um, let go of not trusting folks, then that's that's a good role. And so we can do that for you. Mm-hmm. You can do that for you. And mm-hmm. then afterward, have a good dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Serve those munchies well. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Have exactly. a good dinner afterwards. So yeah, exactly. I can see how that's how that correlates. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah, clinical psychology. It's been a lot of interesting roads. Um, I'm just having a good time at this point. And I feel like I'm hopefully bringing conversations that maybe need more space, need more light up into the consciousness of all of us. So that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, Okay, good, good. Uh, I don't have any questions. I am a free thinker, free flowing type of person. Nice. And so wherever the conversation takes us, it's where it takes us, which means it was meant to happen. Right. Um, the answer guides us in all the things that we do. So they're guiding this conversation. Um, mm-hmm. and so whatever comes out of us is meant to come out of us and it serves a purpose. So absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. So I am ready because um, I could be here asking you 45 questions all day. <laughs> what to do with what you really want to talk about. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Well, I mean, I want to talk about whatever you want to talk about. That's how I do this thing. So if there's something specific you want to talk about, I'm totally here to hold that conversation. I think it might be helpful to first kind of describe who you are, what you do. I know in the email too, you had mentioned talking about Afro-feminine spiritual protection and cleansing because all of that's related to sexual identity. I mean, all that sort of stuff. And if anything's coming up right now that you're like, no, this is where I want to go also happy to facilitate that conversation too okay well my name is akin k lucas i am (laughs) i am a shamanic practitioner i am a uh, indigenous traditional healer i am a drama therapist associate (laughs) Mm -hmm. i am also currently getting my doctorate but in integrative healing at pacifica Mm -hmm. and what else that's the resume. <laughs> is it back- busy? Right. I have a background in special education. I am a foster child, or I, I don't usually use the term former because I believe that once you are a foster child, that experience stays with you. It makes yeah. who you are. Yeah. So I am a foster child. I used to be a foster parent. I have two children. I am 25 in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> So if you ever see me with my children, they're my siblings. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. You know, so if I can look and feel like I'm 25, then that's what we are today. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, so yeah, that's that's what I do. That's who I am. That's what I have done. I am currently um, traveling, doing research mm-hmm. for a organization, and so this is why I'm in Thailand. Thailand is like my pit stop where I take time to write up all my notes and get my writing done, like organization portion of it. Sure. And, like that. and so, yeah, that's who I am, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a mm-hmm. motivator, right? Mm-hmm. I am a um, beauty walker. I am someone who stands in the realm of transitions, 
um, holding that space. And so this is a gambit of things that I do. I am, I'm a protector. Mm. Let me, let me say that I am a protector, right? I am a protector of elders, of children, of women, of energy, right? That cannot protect itself. So I am all the things. Uh (laughs) Yes. I am all the things, right? Uh, And then uh, things that I'm not. And, you know, I will learn what those are as I go. But yeah, so what I am excited to discuss, as you mentioned, is the Afro-feminine. The Afro-feminine, let let me let me say this, the divine feminine Mm -hmm. is closely to the same. I use the term Afro-feminine because I am an African-American. So let me make, I'm going to say that different. I am black. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm switching it up a little bit is because um, the term black usually cover those who's from the slave trade from diaspora um, and African-Americans, usually those who are born in Africa and have came over, but we have also taken on the name African-American as well. So I'm African-America because my roots are in Africa, right? right? But I'm a black person and black people have their own culture. Yes. <laughs> yes. They, we, we're still, we, we have developed an identity, right? And that identity has spread across the globe, Right. And we have our own struggles that's different from those who are from Africa. Mm-hmm. Some of them are the same, but then there's a lot that are different, right? Mm-hmm. And so I am a Black person. And so I like to, to claim that and to clarify that because those terms are important. Mm-hmm. So when I speak of the Afro-feminine, I'm speaking of Black people, right, of the diaspora. And it could be in the Caribbeans, they could be in London, they could be, you know, anywhere that the Black Holocaust or the slave trade have taken place, right? Um, They could even be in Africa and Ghana, right? Because we have a lot of people who's returning back to the continent. We have people who was moved from the West Coast of Ghana down to South Africa during the slave trade, right? And now they have been dropped off in, in South Africa, so now they're South African, right? So it could be those two, right? Yeah. Um, So Black people. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So the Afro-feminine, while she is the divine, there's a difference in um, how we see her. Mm. First thing, we is, we struggle with seeing her. So that's the, that's the most important thing. As Black people, we struggle with seeing her because slavery has stripped her from us. And when I speak of feminine or Afro-feminine, I'm speaking of the energy, mm. not the gender. And so that also makes a difference. In Western philosophy, you find feminine is related to gender, right? Yeah. The mother figure, the um, sister is a is a gender thing. And while we do still correlate the feminine with some form of gender, it's not gender itself. It's the right. energy. It's more like yin and yang. Yes. Right. Yes. It's a dualism, right? And so for so those who practice the African indigenous practices, that dualism is order and disorder, mm-hmm. right? If you look at all the creation stories, when we speak of masculine and feminine, feminine is order, masculine is disorder. Mm -hmm. And so that dualism is there. So it's similar to yin and yang, but yin and yang is not order and disorder so much, but Afro-feminine is, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it is a gambit of different things as well. That's what I say. It also includes the mother, the warrior, the protector, right? The assertive one, flexibility, receptivity, it includes all those things, right? Ah. And so that's important to understand what she is because it frustrates me when people, <laughs> I get really excited. Do when it. When people who speak about the feminine in general correlates her with gender. Oh, you're not acting feminine enough. You're, you had lost your femininity. Even those who acknowledge that Feminine and masculine is like yin and yang. Uh-huh. They still correlate it with gender, right? They take those correct those um, characteristics and be like, are you sp- as a female, you're supposed to be passive and submissive, right? That's not feminine energy. That's not feminine energy, uh-uh. right? Uh-uh. And then they also expect or, or have an idea or, or think that men can't have feminine energy. Or if they do... Then if they seem too feminine, like they cry, or if they do uh, um, get really emotional, oh, they have a feminine energy. No, that's not feminine energy. That's them not controlling their emotions. (laughs) 
<laughs> this this balance to everything. And so feminine energy, just like masculine energy, everyone has it, mm-hmm. right? And we have to learn how to balance those energies. And so we have to learn how to take order and place it in all the disorder and the chaos that the masculine has and organize it and structure it, right? So that it could find peace, mm-hmm. right? Um, connect it to, you know, the other realms, to the answers so that it can find joy and happiness. And so for Black people, that's been stripped from us. Mm. Mm. It's been taken from us. It's been written to have been taken from us. I mean, the Willie Lynch letter itself says, take the Black female, break her, mm. and you break everything else, mm. right? And the reason why they took the Black female, the gender, is because the female itself embodies all things, Right? to intuition right Mm -hmm. she birthed life so in order for her to birth life she has to embody all things and so she is order in itself right break the female you break everything else right Mm -hmm. and so well as black people we are struggling with reclaiming the feminine energy the afro-feminine and then another thing about the afro-feminine the afro is the protector she's not the protector of the physical she's the protector of the mind right? She's a protector of the psyche, hmm. you know, she's protected of the soul, you know, she is the soul, you know, yeah. you know, young says she's an animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, young is like, hey, you know, the woman's the animal and you know, she crazy, but you got to get it together. <laughs> and she's crazy because we have pushed her back, mm. right? You know, and so we don't hear her, Yeah, that unconscious part of that, we don't hear her, right? We can't tap into her, and so that's why people are afraid of her, right? People are like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to deal with the shadow because the feminine is the shadow, right? The feminine holds all the stuff that we don't want to deal with, mm. but yet we also paint her as supposed to be pretty and cute and all this. No, 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 no. The feminine holds all the things that we don't want to deal with, but she also holds all the things that are beautiful as well, yeah. right? And so. She's the protector of the mind. Mm. As for Black people, because of what we have been through and still go through. Yes. Right? We still go through. Mm -hmm. We are trying to figure out how to protect our minds. And we don't know how to do that. Mm. Right? So this is why I focus on protection. Protection, cleansing, and the feminine, because I don't want to protect the body, right? Mm. Men, let the men do that. And when I say men, I ain't talking about the gender. I'm talking about just the physicality of the earth, of the world, that you can touch the material, the matter. Mm. They can, that can hold that space because that's what it's there for. Yeah. They're protected of the body of the temple. Right. Great. That's been covered. But what about this? Mm. Right? Um, Black people have one of the highest mental health issues mm. in the mm-hmm. world right? Mm -hmm. Our children are starting to to have a high mental health issues in in, in the world, or in America, let me say that. We have one of the highest rate of foster care children Mm. in this. Now, that's a systematic issue, because that's how we got there. The system has made us have one of the highest population in foster care. The system has also made us have one of the highest population in the jail system, right? Yes. So with that, our mind Mm. is fragmented. It's broken. So there's, is, I'm going to say it's broken. It's fragmented. Let me go back to this term fragmented. Sure. It's fragmented. And so we're, we're trying to figure out how to piece that together mm. to make us whole again, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so this is what the first thing we have to do is protect our mind. Mm-hmm. And protecting our mind means building our mind, right? Putting back in it what was taken out, mm. right? And, and part of that is taking out culturally black people by nature is the most kindest people in the world <laughs> yeah. I, i'm being a little bit biased but Do if it. you look at history if you just look at history and historical facts we're like oh you need some bread and water we give you bread and water oh you I'm need right to know there. how to do this We'd be like, okay, let me show you how to do this. And then when you turn, do something to us and betray, then we're trying to cut your neck off. But our first instinct is to care for others, right? Yes. So we're the nicest people in the world. Mm-hmm. And we have built up a fortitude of anger, frustration, pain, 
and survival skills that's deeply rooted in masculinity, right? Um, and so we have this one track mind of surviving only. That's a linear thinking. That's a masculine thinking. It's surviving only, right? This fixed on that. Yeah. And because we have gotten there by no choice of our own, we do not know how to be intentionally compassionate mm -hmm. towards one another. And at, at the term I'm, is absent is intentionally because we can be compassionate and we don't know we're doing it, right? Or our compassion comes off in a very assertive and in, 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 in harmful way, right? And then our compassion is never for ourselves either, mm. right? And so that compassion and that grace, we don't hold for ourselves. We don't hold for our family. We give it to a stranger first. And so with that comes abuse, it's abuse. And so we need to build our minds, our psyches mm. up to, to bring in the feminine, right? Yeah. Bring in grounding, you know, keep us firm unto the earth, bring in the compassion, bring in the grace and, and, and not neglecting the warrior spirit, but take that warrior spirit, take that assertiveness and do it differently, not taking on the fighting mode because there's so many ways to win the war, right? Yes, there's yes. So many ways to fight. And it's not always punching first, right? It's not always hitting first, right? It's it's something now fighting is needed. Yes. <laughs> Let me yeah. for that. Right. Fighting is needed. Cutting a person's throat is needed, right? But that's that mama bear energy. Mm -hmm. But mama bear don't come into play until her children been threatened, right? And when her children been third, she roars. So we are now at a stage within the last 50 years that we don't have to roar that much anymore, right? And I'm saying 50 years because guess what? Apartheid just ended in South Africa, less, what, 30 years ago, right? The oldest, I just read an article, the oldest, the last living slave just passed away and he was 90 something. The last living wow. slave. And with that said, my best friend, grandfather was 124. He just passed away a couple of weeks ago. So he also was one of the last living slaves. So, and, and, and this was when they was five, six, seven years old, they were slaves. So we're talking less than a hundred years ago. Yep. Right? And then right after slavery, there was segregation. You know what I'm saying? Then right after that, you had redlining. Then right after redlining, you had the crack epidemic that was put into the communities. Yep. So within the last 50 years, we are now able to breathe just a little bit because we do have the cops still out here killing us exactly exactly <laughs> but we are able to breathe just a little bit in order to try to build our mind where we are we reroute the way we're thinking and fighting and treating each other hmm. right and that's where the feminine comes in yeah implementing those archetypes those frequencies to build our minds back up Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what that would do is that would be a trickle effect because again i'm biased <laughs> yeah do it <laughs> black people in america and you, you you can jump in and say yay nay if you don't agree or whatever it is but and and so this could be it you know i value your opinion black people may lead culturally and so what black people do eventually everyone else in America starts to do it too. They'd be like, oh, okay. After they criticize it and call it something else, the next thing you know, they're doing it too. Yes. And so because of that, once we start building our minds back Ooh. where it's healthy, using that feminine, bringing her back to the forefront or bringing her back in partnership with the masculine, right? Bring her back in partnership. You know, because everything has to be balanced. Once we start bringing her back in partnership, that would trickle down to the rest of the world. Yes, it will. Right? It would trickle down to the rest of the world. And so to me, that's important, right? To me, that's what needs to be done. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah right so i'm like yeah I, I mean i probably was going on a tangent my mind you know focus may have been here there but yeah no you know not a tangent you're speaking you're speaking an important message that needs to be shared and i am just listening and learning and i appreciate you sharing yes keep it going <laughs> so so yeah that's that's 
that's that's my focus. That's my goal mm -hmm. is to bring the feminine back into partnership yeah. to help heal and protect the psyche, the mind of black people. Yeah. Now that we have a space to breathe a little bit because that space is going to keep growing and growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So now that we hear, we now can start saying, hey, let's do A, B and C. You know, how, how do how do we do that? Yeah. How, 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 how does that look? Right. Mm -hmm. And that can look a whole bunch of ways. You know, We're, here's the great thing about 2022, 2020, 21 as well. Yeah. Is that the world in general have been slowly bringing her back anyway. Mm -hmm. And we're not even talking about the, 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 the feminist movement. We're just talking about her practices and her traditions and her characteristics. We've been talking about mindful thinking. We've been talking about meditations. We've been talking about, you know, earthwork, right? We've been talking about land. Um, so we've been slowly bringing her back to the forefront anyway, you know, and you see it more because now they're like, oh, we need to do things about these fem these females out here getting control. But it's not just females. It's everybody. Yes. It's males, too, because the feminines and everybody. You hear males are doing yoga. They're doing meditation. They're doing affirmations. They're doing... Yeah. That's the feminine energy coming into play. It's more to her than that, yes. But that's her coming back into the mm -hmm. forefront, right? But those who sit so deeply rooted in the masculine, all they see is girl power, girl power, right? <laughs> all they see is black girl magic, black girl magic. Yes, yeah. yes, we have black girl magic. Yes, we have girl power, right? And so they're trying to cut that at the neck, right? That's why we have the abortion laws that kicked in, you know what I'm saying? Ugh. That's why they kind of revisit about what women can and cannot do in the workplace and how, oh you know, uh, how they're supposed to dress. And they, they try to do all these things, you know, right now because the feminine is stepping back up to the plate. Yes. And they're getting nervous about it, right? They're getting nervous about it. And not only are they getting nervous about it from a, a global aspect, Right, because you got the um, I'm horrible with names and titles. That's okay. That's okay. But I forgot what country is with the um Muslim woman is like. I'm taking off my hijab, my head oh, wrap. Oh yeah. I'm not covering myself. Right. I have the right not to. The young lady got killed because she took off her yeah. her covering. But yeah. now there's a big protest. Right. Come on, this is a global movement Huge. that is going on. Huge. Right. You you see what I'm saying? So yes. She's Coming back into the plate, now we just need to do it more intentionally, right? And I'm not one for separation division. However, for those who experience trauma, we can't have the oppressor come in and try to teach or tell us or do or walk hand in hand with us because we're going to be totally triggered the whole entire time. So this is why I'm focusing on black people, mm -hmm. right? This is why the Afro feminine gotta come in because she has to bring order first. Yeah. And once she brings that order in, then we can kumbaya with everybody else. Right. But we still living in trauma in 50 years. You can't get over 400 years of abuse in 50 years. No. It's just not gonna happen. And so because we still living in trauma and we still having trauma placed on us, we have to bring order first to our psyche. And then, like I said, then we can go hold hands. Mm -hmm. So it's not a separation or division. It's just that when people are trying to heal, you don't want the person who raped and, and, and um, raped and molested them and abused them to be sitting in the room while they're sitting there with the therapist and the doctor trying to heal. They're going to be too busy looking at them like and jumping in because they're scared. Exactly. They're nervous. They don't know what to expect, right? Uh, you know, they, 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 they don't trust what's going to happen. They can't let their guard down and heal, right? So it's not discrimination. You know, it's not any of that. It's just that we have to focus on us first yeah. because we're trying to feel people. Jewish people did it, you know? I got great Jewish friends, but you know what they do as a community? They work together because they're trauma filled people. Yep. Just like we are. Yeah. And so they like we gotta heal ourselves. So they that tight fit community that mm -hmm. works on themselves 
before they go out and do anything else with other people. Right. I mean, they, they socialize. We ain't say no one socializes and stuff like that. We just talking about the healing aspects of it, right? And so that's what black people have to do too, right? That's what we have to do because we 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 have to heal as community because we was broken mm-hmm. as a community. That's important to do. Yes. Yeah. And you're talking about in the last 100 years, I mean, what we know from some of even like the neuroscience research of epigenetics, right, of like trauma being passed down, even if you weren't directly, you know, I mean, we're all being affected by that. But even if you weren't experiencing the trauma yourself directly, that can be passed down through generations. There's been some interesting studies that they did with mice where they condition the mice to be afraid of a um, cherry blossom smell. And then they bred subsequent generations where they didn't actually expose them to the sort of like classical conditioning for them to be afraid of the cherry blossom. But four generations down, even those mice were afraid of the cherry blossom smell just naturally from the genetics. Right. Right. I I was in a... um class you know how to do continue education for sure. things right yeah 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 i know so I, was, I know <laughs> uh, our class for one of my continue educations for um drama therapy whatever 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 and they was talking about epigenetics they wasn't getting deep into epigenetics but they was touching on epigenetics and about toddlers and in, in this um social and um you know upbringing how that affects you etc cetera, etc cetera. and so one of the things i, I was saying is that black people People in general, all people do this, right? So I, I, I keep coming back to that because I want to make it clear that I'm not, I know everyone experiences it, but I'm used, I'm speaking, focusing on Black people. Yes. Black people, we we do things like pass down recipes, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone pass down recipes, but how I pass my recipe down to my daughter would be different to how you would pass recipe down to your daughter, right? My recipe is going to be filled with trauma. Your recipe does not. Yep. The way I see my food is a learned trade based on the trauma I experienced, right? Your experience of food is different. And so that's part of the epigenetics. That's part of, of generational on trauma, right? Yep. But we don't recognize that. We don't know that because the thing about Black people in America is we was breeded so quickly when we came to America that our second, third, fourth, sixth generation happened within the first 10, 15 years of us being here. So by 15 years came, we was already in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth generation. And that's like 15, 20 years after the first ship slave ship because we was breeded for that purpose. So our population is much bigger here and our, and our generations in America is way, way, way down the line because of the breeding, right? And so when that happens, we pass things down by the time we hear 400, 400 generations later, 400 generations later, right? Yeah. 380 generations later, we don't know why we do things. It's just what we do. Why? Because that's how my grandma taught me. That's how my mama taught me. That's how her mama taught her. That's how her daddy taught him. That's how his pappy taught him. That's just what we do. Yeah. Right? It's just like language. Mm-hmm. Everyone has some type of accent or dialect that they speak within their family that's different than how they speak in the neighborhood, that's different than how they speak at work and school, right? You know, I, I may call my, my, my grandmother grandmother. You may call your nana. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just how we do things. Right. But we don't realize that's trauma. We don't realize that trauma. You know, um, Dr. Stacey Patton wrote the wonderful book years ago, and, and people still get mad at her about this book. They be mad at her like, I don't know what, about how Black people originally do not spank their children. If you go to, I just left Africa a couple months ago, and I went to three different places in Africa, and I sat around people with their children, their babies. No one spanked nobody. No one raised their hand. No one threatened them. No one, you know, uh, yell at them in in anger or frustration. They may have yelled because they were like, oh, you don't want them to fall. Or, hey, sure. you, know, you know, you want to fall and bump your head, you know, stuff like that. You know, just a, a reaction, but not in anger, you know, not in frustration. Um, they didn't do any of those things, right? And so when I think of America and how we raise our children, we have no patience. We don't have patience because we wasn't bred and programmed to have patience, mm. right? We was bred and programmed to have fear. So how we raise our children is based in fear, yeah. right? 
So we spank our children because we rather spank them before someone else spank them, right? We rather beat them before they get out there and get killed. So we do all these abusive things in house first because we live in fear that mm. when they step outside our door, the white person is going to do it. The cop is going to do it. The enslaver is going to do it. Somebody going to do it. And then we're going to be heartbroken because they took our loved one from us. So mm. let me send them here so that I don't have to worry about them when they get out the door. Now, here's the reality. That don't work. It don't work. But that's how we've been programmed, right? And we've been programmed to be abusive because we was abused and taught to be a certain way. And so we just pass that down. And that's what our book is about. And everyone hates it. You know, they're like, oh, no, you're not supposed to hit. We're supposed to hit our children. We've been hitting our children for years. We've been spanking our kids. And, and my mama spanked me. And look, I turned out all right. No, you trauma filled. You, you, you are filled with trauma, but we don't recognize it because it become part of our culture, right? And so there's some things about the culture that we have to break, mm -hmm. right? We have to break, you know, kicking our children out the house at a certain age, making them out there homeless before they're 25, living on people's couches. That's still homeless because it's not theirs, right? We have to break out the fact that, you know, money it's an important thing to have because we need it to survive, right? Right. But how we get it doesn't matter. Happiness matters, right? Yeah. Even if we work it at McDonald's, if you happy and you can pay your bills at McDonald's, then pay your bills at McDonald's as long as you live in happiness and joy. You know, a lot of these things that we have to break out of. Because it affects our psyche. It affects mm -hmm. how we view ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, right? And if by treating our children that way, we raise them to be inefficient adults, right? And inefficient means hurtful and harmful adults. Mm -hmm. And that's not the world that we originally want to be or that we yeah. originally came from, right? And so, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so we, we just... <sighs> yes, yes. And <laughs> what did you say? I start singing, bless my wonderful heart. Yes. Are you kind of music? I mean, I said Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, the musical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. I hear you. And I appreciate you bringing all of this into the space here because it's a powerful conversation that needs to be heard, right? Because you're talking about how do we bring these pieces together to protect our energy and to create a different future, right? It, it's bringing up this conversation so that we can become aware of this and then move forward in a different direction. Right, right, right. And you can only do that by going to original roots. The original roots, right? Of indigenous practices. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the only way you can do that because there's something so profound and heartfelt and wonderful when you bring indigenous traditions to the table, right? And the way they care mm. together, right? The, at the root of it, they care for everything, not just each other, but for the trees and the birds and the grass and the bumblebees and the mosquitoes. Look. <laughs> Out the hard one. That's the difficult right, look, one. Like, you see, I say mosquitoes. <laughs> they hurt me. <laughs> You're gonna die today. <laughs> Survival of the fittest. You know, they they bless them if they have to kill them because everything has a cycle of life, right? So death is common. Death is a normal thing. Death is the next journey, right? You know, but if I have to take a life, let me bless that life on your next journey. Right, so the intention is different. It's heartfelt. It's love. It's grounded in the, the the idea of that this is not an ending, but a new beginning. Right, and so bringing that back to the table, the indigenous practices back to the table, is important. Right, and those indigenous practices, if you look at any of them, deals with the feminine energy. Mm. They bring it back home. Yeah. And energy. You you know how you hear the story. Um, what's that? Um again, horrible names and title. What's the book? Um Woman That Runs with Wolves. Oh, baby, you're speaking to me. I'm reading it right now. <laughs> I think that's the book. That's the one that's coming to me. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about the moon. We talk about the wolf, right? What about the wolf, uh the wolf energy, right? That that feminine. How do you correlate? Think about it. 
we are less than you and I, we're in between the ages of 25 and 50, right? And how do we know, our grandparents know, and our grandparents' grandparents know that the moon and the feminine energy and the water are all in the same cycle or all correlates, right? Or they all may be one. And so when we talk about the moon, we talk about the woman. When we talk about the water, we talk about the woman or the feminine, right? When we talk about wolves, we talk about the feminine. And wolves are a very aggressive animal, right? But they pack animal, mm -hmm. right? They community animal, right? And they're very protective animals. And they care about their youngs and their family. That's the feminine energy. The wolf usually represent the feminine. So how do we know this? How do we just innately know this? Where did this idea come from? Yeah. Because it's always been there. Like the universe has always been there because the feminine energy is order. <laughs> so we're going to put it in there and you're just going to know these things or we're going to help you figure out these things because it's important to know. And all indigenous practice do that. Mm. They always bring it to the table of the feminine energy. I haven't met one, seen one, read one, researched one. And there's plenty out there that I don't know anything about, right? But I, I haven't seen it yet that does not put that feminine energy in the center of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Even if we start talking about the sun god, mm. right? If you go far back enough, Ra was feminine. Now, we don't want to talk about that for those people out there in Egyptology. We don't want to talk about that if we go back far enough, right? Because you have Ra, the sun god, which in Greek mythology, Greek, I get Greek and Roman mixed up because to me it's all the same thing. Look, <laughs> which, who's the sun god in Greek mythology? It's not, it's not Thor. Thor's lightning. What is, what is his name? Oh, God. Anywho. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but if you go back far, far enough and you have Ra, the sun god, you realize that they were originally feminine. It was a feminine energy. And then what they did was they changed it up, right? They changed it up because at the a certain time period where they overthrown society that was ruled by the, it was matriarchal society and they overthrown it and brought patriarchy. When they did that, they switched the raw from being feminine energy, not feminine as female, but the energy component and the characteristics and personalities and the traits to be masculine because they wanted to line up with the patriotic system. So they couldn't have the feminine energy still in control, regardless if it's a male or female body, they still they couldn't have it in control when they try to make it match and correlate with all the rest of the patriotic system. So they had to switch it up. Go back far enough. I, if I, if, yeah. if I find a book for you. I, 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 I send it to you. Look, look. Yes. <laughs> the title of it, right? You know what I'm saying? But it's like, it's always at the center. It's always at the center. And then here's another beauty of it. I, I heard this um, earlier today. The men is always in the forefront. Mm -hmm. They always in the front. Because the most prized and valued possession is in the center. And then when the most prized and valued possession is in the center, it needs to be protected. And so what is in the front is what's protecting the most prized and valuable entity, which is in the center. So yes, you're going to always see men, right? Because they're a physical component. They are physical component. They are at the animalistic level, right? So they're going to always be ready to fight and roar and, def and, 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 and shoot and kill all those things because they are born to protect something valuable right feminine energy which is in the center of all things it's just like your body your body this flesh protects your internal your spirit your soul right so this physical component right that we call the temple that you see every single day you know you see this first you never see the internal right you feel it you are aware of it because you think, you dream. Yeah. <laughs> run through your head and you be like, oh, where that saw came from? So you're very much aware of it, right? But you never see it. Well, who's the internal? The feminine. 
And what does this, this out, outer shell does? Protect it. Because it's the most prized possession. Right? And so we got to go back to that, placing that feminine back in the center. Right? Have that physical protection around it. But we also got to build up that inner protection. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, and that that right there is bringing in different components depending on what your religion is. Right. right? You know, and that can be, you know, prayer, spells. Sure. You know, it can be prayers or spells, however you want to say it, right? Yeah. It, it, it would be rituals, affirmations, you know, saying meditations, you know, daily work of reminders, consistently reminders to self because we struggle with that right it's like a diet <laughs> yes yes i need it every eat, day we, look we want to eat well right and so we be trying to eat well the first day we might be okay the second day we might be okay that third day we start Woo! to slip <laughs> right we get caught up doing work doing whatever and we forgot and had and just ate what was in front of us but then we went home and had a good meal a nice healthy meal because we got one meal in a day, but then the fourth day, it happened again. And then the third day was two meals versus one meal, or it was two snacks versus one snack, right? And so that's very hard to be consistent in your practice, Yeah. right? But however, you have to be consistent with your mind mm. because in two, you don't have to do it anymore because that change needs to take effect, right? And everybody is different. And, and, mm. and being vague, a little broad, or yeah. I'm saying things that people are already doing because everybody is different. Mm. And the way that I operate and work is I don't know how I can help you until I talk to your ancestors. Mm. Because remember, we're talking about epigenetic and generational trauma, right? And so what you're carrying around is not your own. Yeah. Some of it is in your little lifespan that you didn't walk around this moon, that part is, but then the other stuff is not. And so how do I know what? needs what you need to do to help you until I talk to your ancestors right until I sit in the room with you you know and and feel and know yeah energetically what is going on right and so I'm I'm being very vague about that because I don't know what you may need right and what they may need because while we may be a collective and we may have a collective trauma we deal we still experience it differently mm-hmm Mm-hmm. So, how what what you may need is going to be different, and so but what? But at the end of the day, there's still main things, main things we have to do, and being consistent is one of them. Mm-hmm. So if I if I say, hey, you have to consistently cook soup every single day, and soup means you have to have five ingredients in it or eight ingredients in it, and each one of those ingredients is things that you have to work on throughout the day. That could be you saying. A, a, a mantra twice a day that's one ingredient mm. right that could be you doing a certain activity right right and that activity can be something as simple as sitting in the mirror and brushing your hair and embracing your beauty right so it could be di- it's different from everyone but that's an ingredient so that's the third ingredient that you have to make every single day and yes you may hate soup <laughs> <laughs> You may not want no soup and stew. It could be summertime at 90 degrees outside, but you got to make soup every single day and eat it for one of your meals. You can eat other stuff throughout the day, but for dinner, you have to have this soup or stew. And there's seven to eight different ingredients or five different ingredients that goes into this stew or soup that you have to eat every day, right? And be consistent for it for a certain amount of time. That could be 10 days, 21 days. That could be 21 months. Mm. It depends, yeah. right? You know, so these are different. And, and I, I bring in soup and those agree because, you know, soup, you'd be having all types of stuff. You'd be having beans and vegetables and, and, and you know, tomatoes. You'd be having yeah. all types of things. And soup and soup, you can make all different types of ways, right? But soup is hearty. Soup is healthy, right? And then soup is food mm. that feeds the body, Right. And then cooking is an energetic, it's a feminine energetic ritual. Right. And and men cook. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I 
know a lot of men that cook better than me. Look. Yes, same. Huh? <laughs> Very much the <so>, same. <laughs> Look, I'd be like, well, how are you bringing? So that's not a, a gender role thing. That's an energetic frequency. But yeah. it's also a feminine energetic frequency yeah. because cooking brings things together. It brings ingredients together for flavor, for different vibration, for different purpose, right? It brings people together for different vibration, for a different purpose, right? And so cooking deals with collectivity. That's the feminine. Mm. And then we're talking about ritual. Cooking also is a ritual. Yes, it is. That's that feminine energy. So simple little things like that, right? Well, we don't think nothing of it. You know, a lot of times we want to do these big and crazy different rituals or we got to do all these other things that we think is supposed to, you know, do go and, and go bathe in a river on a full moon Make on it. the sixth day. Of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Wear, wear white and purple and have all these other things but even, even with that there's cooking involved mm -hmm. you gotta eat it, well it's not that you gotta eat you gotta do offering ah. it's not that you gotta eat you gotta do offering or if you're not doing offering you need certain herbal remedies to use when you do them right so that means you gotta collect items Put them together, just like cooking, right? And it all has to be natural items. So we talk about plants and herbs and, and, and liquid, liquids and minerals and things like that. So cooking is a feminine energy, right? That's a characteristics. That's a, a behavior. That's a trait. That's a ritual that we don't we do every single day. And we think nothing of it. We don't understand the importance of it, right? And so something as simple as that. You had to make soup every day. And you looking at me like, why well, I got to make soup every day? And I sit here and give you the five ingredients. I said, you know what? You can make any kind of soup you want, but whatever you make, you got to use these five ingredients in the soup, right? And I sit there and give you the ingredients of that soup. And then as you make it the week later, so I tell you what each ingredient means for you spiritually. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I tell you that I use black pepper, the reason why you got to use black pepper. If I tell you that you have, have to have spinach in it, the reason why you have to have spinach in it. You know what I'm saying? And so you got to make this soup with black pepper, spinach, potatoes, and two other items. You know, I'm just throwing stuff out there, right? Sure. And all of them has a spiritual reason. All of them has a healing component. And we're not talking about physical. We're talking about spiritual, right? And as you make this soup, you may have to do something. You may have to sing a song. That's another ingredient right there. You may have to sing a song. I don't know. But these are very simple things that we overlook and don't think nothing of it. And we're like, this is stupid. I'm not doing this. this and but it changed lives. It changed lives. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you may have to go to the gym. That's something that I, I'm going to venture. I don't have to. They didn't tell me how to do it now, but I might have to do it. <laughs> look, it's <laughs> It's right now they tell me to do something else. I just thought about it, but they, you know, they're like, "Look, you're gonna have to hit that gym, Vince. Back to the gym you go." <laughs> it's coming for you. You know, you need to. <laughs> right. You know, you may have to go to the gym. You might have to go dance. You might have to take up a martial art. You might have to take up a defense class. You had to do something. I had a client when I told her, I said, "I need you to either take a boxing class, a defense class, or go to the gym and learn." Or, and hit a bag. She was like, what? I was like, hey, it's not me telling you to do this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she's like, well, I could just, you know, they saying this is what you need to do, right? And I think, I don't know how long it went. She didn't do it in the beginning, but then she's like, okay, I'm gonna go do it. You know, because I asked, did you go do it yet? Yeah. yeah. You, yeah you being hard-headed? Okay, you won't be hard-headed. Okay, I'm gonna sit back and watch you be hard-headed. Then eventually, they went one time they went and then they um went again and they realized that two things have started happening one they started being able to sleep better Ooh. right they started being able to sleep better um and then two they didn't feel so frustrated throughout the day so angry throughout the day right they still get, had their moments but they wasn't as consistent right sure. than it was before yeah and i said oh Maybe that's why they tell you, you need to start going to the gym. Why? Because physical activity for some people has to be very 
intense because the trauma they holding needs to move intensely out of them. So punching a bag, kicking and fighting is the way that you need to get it out, right? And scream while you're doing it. So that's part of your soup that you're making, right? That you have to do throughout the week or what, what other ingredients is, you know? And so, hey, go to the gym, fight. Don't fight people, fight the bag. Look, yeah, <laughs> you know, it could change and, and we don't realize that it will, right? Or some people just need to be able to walk every day, right? And they say, oh, I already walk. Yeah, but you don't walk like you're supposed to walk. Yeah, right. Like intensity. Yeah, I, t- I, I, I recently had some. I told someone I said, "Um, are you out in your yard? Do you do you go in your yard?" They was like, "Yeah, we go out there." I said, "What's what's the upkeep on your yard?" And they was like, "Oh, we do A, B, C." I said, "No, you need to be in your yard. You need to be in your yard for some some people because it's a releasing, yeah. right? And it's a communion as well. Mm-hmm. It's a communion as well, right? And so." I don't know. Everyone is different, right? And how that feminine energy wants to be brought in, how your ancestor wants you to work on your protection and your cleansing is different, right? But there's always three components. Protection and cleansing of the mind, which means we're dealing with the feminine. Those three components, which is the most important things in the world right now. I'd be like, that's enough. Yeah. Don't give me no more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I love that I was going to ask you too. Like, how do you start to implement this? And I didn't even have to ask. You just knew you were going. The connection is there. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I, it's a struggle for me sometimes because I'd be like, I, I, at the end of the day, we, we are human, right? Having this, as we have the new term is having this human experience. I often, I get um, imposter syndrome, huh. right? I'm a black person who experienced trauma. And one of the trauma is that black people are not good enough, right? Especially black women, we're not good enough. And I'm a foster kid, mm. right? I'm, yeah. Am I not good enough for yeah. whatever reason it is? Whether I experienced it from a family or whether I experienced from the system, the self and the people that I've lived with and from house to house, I get that. I, got, I get imposter syndrome and right. I fight it on a regular Oof. basis, right? And... I always be like, am I, am I, oh God, am I doing this right? Oh, is they going to be like, oh, you ain't showing me nothing. You ain't just, you know, and yeah. thank God for, for community, mm. right? I thank God for community. I have a wonderful friend, correction. I have three yes. wonderful friends and teachers. I got Dr. G Love from Soul Shifters. I got Dr. Stephanie Burns and Dr. Deanna Downs. Black women, all doctors, baby. I just realized. I just, I just realized that. And then, oh, and I can't forget Maria. Oh, my heart, Maria. They remind me on a regular basis Oof. of how great my mind is and how good my work is. That's collectivity. That's support. That's a system, and that's that feminine. That's that feminine because I do, I suffer with it, right? It's one of my traumas. And I know I'm not the only one, but when you don't have a team of people and I'd be shouting them out all the time, I'd be like, hey, you know, I'm so appreciative of these people, you know, because I'm a hot mess over here. You know, I'm a hot mess, y'all. They know I'm a hot mess. (laughs) And I will send them a text or I will call them or or whatever may happen. And they'd be like, you know, everybody' personality is different. I got one who would talk me through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you your stuff is really good, and oh, you did a great job here. And you know, um, if if when you tell me something, this and this and this and that, I got one who would like, girl, if you don't sit your ass down, look, <laughs> give it how you really need to hear it. <laughs> right, if you don't sit your ass down, all this great stuff you out here doing, shoot, you know, what I'm saying? if it wasn't for you, this person wouldn't be like. <laughs> <laughs> yes we all need that friend right i'd be like oh god you know what i'm saying and then i have one who's you know like my, my big brother big sister who would sit here and be like if you don't step into your power right now and get it together and i'd be like ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, <laughs> <my shit." laughs> you know but 
that is what that's that's what everyone needs yes. right that's what we need we need Absolutely. that team we need that support system we need that community yes. we need the collective and those reminders to step into your power yes right step yes. into your power and and get over those and those traumas and when i say get over i'm talking about not heal because healing is a lifelong journey right right Right. But have your moment and then step out of it. Mm. Mm. Right. So and th- those two, and they do great work. They do great work. And like I said, they're, they're not just my friends. They also my teachers. Right. Yes. You know, soul shifters. Dr. G level soul shifters. <laughs> they saved my life Oof. a couple of times. You know, she don't know it. So, you know, oh. if she, if she ever watched this, now she knows. Don't tell nobody. But, oh. Uh, <laughs> You just told a lot of people, actually. <laughs> you know, out there doing that good, good work for the community, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Dr. Stephanie Burns out there doing that good, good work for the community, right? Maria out there, come on, standing in between at the death door, doing the good, good work, you know? And that helps me stand in, my, in, in that feminine energy because I'm surrounded by feminine energy, right? I'm surrounded by feminine energy who's going to hold you. Yeah. And so I wanted to put that out there because I think that was important to yeah. know that as I'm sitting here talking and it seems like, oh, I got my stuff together. I do today. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not later but at least right now <laughs> right right exactly we know maybe not later but at least right now at least right now yes. at least right now look <laughs> yes yes i'm with you, you know, because i am connected yes i am rooted yes. right and rooting, when you are rooted like a tree doesn't mean you are fixed it's a difference between feminine and masculine energy feminine is rooted masculine is fixed Mm. Fixed means you can't move it. It it can't go nowhere. It's in there, stuck and stayed, right? Rooted means it spreads out. It just runs deep. Yeah. It runs really, really, really deep down into that soil, into the ground underneath the earth, probably to the center of the earth. It runs really, really deep. But it spreads out in all different directions. And it's connected to so many different things, right? And it changes and it grows as it spreads, that's what rooted is, right? And so when we're talking about the feminine energy and we're talking about protection and cleansing, we got to understand that we have to be rooted and we have to be connected to a community. Yes. Yes. There, there's no, there's no, if, if let's go back to the wolf. Yeah. Right? Pack. When we talk about long, if you read, I'm a big sci-fi Fanatic. yes yes I, I love sci-fi shows but i love sci-fi books uh-huh are are romance novels i should say sure but wolves and vampires and you know all those little cute things right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but all those little cute things right the reverse harem you know what I'm saying? sure sure sure, those- sure and if you read any of those stories about wolves of any kind, or if you look at how wolves run, they never run alone. And if there is a lone wolf, they always tell you how a couple things will happen with a lone wolf. A lone wolf will go crazy. They will mentally go crazy where they will start to attack everything around them. Mm. And they also harm themselves because they lose their mind because they're not connected to a pack because a pack is what keeps them stable and grounded right so that's one thing that happened when a lone wolf is not connected to a pack they lose their mind right the second thing is they die early Mm. they die early so where a wolf can live i'm throwing numbers out here these are not facts folks (laughs) (laughs) a wolf can live maybe 110 years in a pack a lone wolf will only live 50 you see what i'm saying yes and so it's important to mention people in your life because they're part of your pack and your community and they keep you rooted. No matter what changes you grow or go through underneath the ground or above the ground, right? Community is important. Yes. And anyone who says 
I don't get along with females or I don't have a lot of friends means that they are, everyone is imbalanced, right? Because we're talking about, you know, bringing that feminine up. Yeah. That means that they are suffering. They are suffering because they're so used to suffering, they don't recognize their suffering. You see what I'm saying? I do, 100%. Yes. And I ain't saying go out there and get 106 friends. I'm not saying that. <laughs> no, right. Exactly. Exactly. No, I hear you. I mean, community is so <laughs> necessary. So important. Yes. So important. That's the, that's that, bring that feminine to the front. Uh huh. And like you said earlier, and, go ahead. Yeah. And, and, and what's more important is that not only is community important for adults, community importance for children. You know, I, I specialize in children. Mm hmm. I love the babies, right? I love the babies. I love those with severe disabilities, as I call it. Sometimes people may get offended. I say my little crazies. So, <laughs> you love them. I love them. The ones who be hearing voices and seeing things or, you know, those who are considered trouble. You know, I, I, I love those children and those, those with special disabilities because, first of all, they're usually the most nicest and kind-hearted people in the world. They just got a little extra going on, right? Mm -hmm. But they need community and one of the reason why we have such a high population of foster care children is because they don't have community like they're supposed to have that's one right and key where i said like they're supposed to have they may have family but they don't have community they may have a lot of people um surrounding them but they don't have community right and and so community for children who have, who's only been on this planet for a short time and experienced a lot of trauma is very important. It's very, very important, yes. right? And consistent community, right? Not someone they call every three, four months, you know, or every three, four years, but community is important. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a healed child when I say heal child, I mean someone who's, you know, who's getting the work or doing the work if you don't have community. Yes. I'm thinking about the inner child in all of us that so, so, so needs this. There's such a push within Western culture and specifically within Western psychology of the individual, the individual, the individual. And it's like, yes, and okay. The individual is formed off of the multiple relationships that you have with other people. And those relationships end up being mirrors to yourself. Exactly what you were saying right. earlier, right? Of having those other people that you look to, to say, who am I? And they mirror back to you. So it's impossible to ever take your identity, your experience and isolate it into one specific self like that. There is a self, but it's created through all of the relationships that we have. I always like right. that concentric circles, right? If there's all these circles, that center point at the middle mm -hmm. is you. And so when you feel like an imposter and you look out to all those other people and they remind you, no, you are this higher self, you are this strong self, you are this person, that brings you up. And that's why it is so changing when you reach out to those people and have that sort of like, I don't know, raft in all the waves of life. I mean, that is what we need is interconnectedness, not interdependence, yep. but interconnectedness. That is a necessity. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, that that that, that individuality um, and that independence is all masculine. Yes. It's all masculine. That was Freud way back. Come on. Come on. You know, Freud talking about, well... If you stay in your mama nip for too long, what? <laughs> I think he had his own issues. Maybe he was projecting he, he, he out. Did. Yeah. He, he, his projection is, uh, <laughs> yeah. is we all do that, right? <laughs> you know, as a psychologist, as a therapist, yep. anyone who's in the field of caring or caretaking or servicing, people in general project, right? And we all have some form of trauma. Yeah. We do. And, and now awareness has become a thing, right? Awareness has become a thing. And because awareness is now a thing, we're recognizing that, hey, we have trauma. And so that's the first step of doing any, any type of healing is being aware, yeah. right? And, 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 and being aware makes you want to change something, makes you want to do something, right? 
because it shifts your emotions, right? So being aware brings the feminine into play, right? Now, awareness is a masculine thing, right? And that's okay because we have to have both. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. We're talking about dualism, right? You can't have one without the other, right? You, you just can't do it. Right now, we are imbalanced. We did all masculines up here and the feminine is down here, right? And so we, we can't, that doesn't work, right? And so that awareness comes into play with the masculine because they're now opening their eyes, right? And when I say opening eyes, that they not that they was they yeah, they've been in the dark, but not in the dark, right? I know that's they're like, wait, how, how are you in the dark, but you're not in the dark? Look, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because they're different for darkness. Right there's the darkness when you close your eyes, and then there's the darkness when you go outside. And you still have the moonlight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's that internal darkness, and then there's that moonlight darkness. Right. So they've been in the moonlight. They've been in the darkness with the moonlight, where they still have some vision. They still could see some things. So they still have awareness of that. Oh, there may be things around you. You know what I'm saying? You may not be able to figure out all the objects in the room but you know is in the room right so what brings the feminine in is in the dark it go oh now i know that's a table and the table sitting on the left side of the table look <laughs> and we need to move it because it will hurt us mm -hmm. right versus saying hey there's an object right here in the middle of the room i don't know what it is so i'm just gonna go and do whatever i'm gonna do so there's no fear there's no oh can it hurt us there's no uh decision making you know, saying about what would benefit us emotionally or any of those things, right? We just know there's an object in the room. Right. And so if I go straight, I won't hit the object. But if I turn, I may hit the object and it may hurt and it may not hurt, right? You know, so let me go straight. Now I'm making a logical decision. I'm going to go straight, right? Where that feminine comes in and say, yeah, there's an object in the room. It's a chair. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and you can go straight that's a logical decision or you can sit your ass down at the table you know <laughs> rest for a bit you know what I'm saying you know depending on what else is in the room right but the feminine come in and tell you what is in the room because the feminine sits in that dark place right so they can see very clearly they can see very clearly you see that at that masculine see the object the feminine see hey that's a chair that's a table right there's a light on the wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. You want to see better? Go turn it on. You know what I'm saying? So you can feel better about yourself. You know, you won't be scared no more. You know, all these other things. You know, they bring in that emotional aspect. They bring in the aspect that will benefit you and benefit everyone in the room versus saying, hey, there's an object in the room. I don't know what it is. We're going to go ahead and keep straight. But keep straight may have you falling off the um, curve or off the building because yeah. you can't see. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, you was right. You didn't want to hit the table. So in that moment, you needed to keep straight. Because you didn't know what it was. You didn't know if it was going to cause you harm or not. I know what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what it is. I know what it's going to do. So. Yeah. 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 Tune yeah. into that intuition because it knows the way. It knows the way. And that's another thing that psychology is not really honored is that sense of intuition of your inner compass. And when you know the way yourself. This, this is true. This is true. This is true. One thing I'm just glad that uh, death psychology, um, especially integrative healing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad I'm in this program, yeah, right? And I, really, I didn't really have any, I had no intention of going back to get my doctorate, but I'm glad that I did because we do talk about intuition. We talk about young, right? Yeah. And yeah. young is all about the dreams, the archetypes, the inner self, the anima, you know. So we do talk about the intuition, right? However, we don't talk about how to use or how to tap in to the intuition, right? And we don't talk about how that intuition can be. We, we, t we touch it. We touch it, right? We touch it a little bit right when we start talking about the ancestors in different realms and things that we don't but we don't go into deeply into the different realms part right we talk about the ancestors but we don't go deeply into it because it varies for different cultures right right, right. and for my culture we we 
we rely on the ancestors heavily, right? Heavily. That's that inner voice, right? Some people say that's that intuition. And I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give another name for ancestors. We call them angels as well. Because mm-hmm. you know, you got some Christian folks out there don't like the word ancestors, so we might want to say angels. Sure. Well, you got angels, aren't they? You got angels protecting you and guiding you, mm-hmm. right? Call it what you want, right? Call it what you want. But that helps with that intuition, that gut feeling, that, you know, they're speaking. Yes. And if you don't want to use any of those to ancestors, angels, uh, spiritual guys, then if you have a direct connection to God, you don't listen to God when they talk to you. <laughs> mm, good luck. <laughs> God, not your intuition. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you have to listen to it. That fleeting, the fleeting. For example, I okay, I have henna on my hand. Yeah, right? I yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. I, I did this earlier. This is the first time I did this on my hand. Uh-huh. So, it, so it, it, if you look close enough, you see there's some errors. It's okay. That's, how, <laughs> that's life. Yes. And the thing is, for months, I woke up saying I need to get the henna. Don't know why, right? So I had it this with me for for months. I say I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, you know. But because I'm not a, a artist, artist. I mean, I'm an artist, but sure, I hear you. myself, you know, I don't know how to do henna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It just kept calling, just kept calling, and so I said, let me sit my butt down and do this thing, right? But the, it was a fleeting thought, very fleeting right and for me if it comes to me more than once i'm like let me go ahead and do it but it was a very fleeting thought and it's, it's just henna it could it's cute right but then i had to when i would start doing it, i had to think about the tradition that henna comes from african do henna we henna is known for india right right, right. hindu um but we fail to realize that africans in Africa, do henna like crazy, right? And if you think about it, when you think of the Indians and Hindu, I'm sorry for offending people, their roots are in Africa too, right? So somewhere across that migration, they brought those traditions and cultures, right? And so I'm sitting here doing, I'm like, oh, okay, because I have stuff that's coming up. And they're telling me, hey, you need to do A, B, and C. Don't worry about if you know what you're doing or not. I need you to do A, B, and C for a reason. Mm. And it took me to sit down and start playing on my hand to realize, oh, henna is a tradition, is an indigenous practice that you usually do for celebration, for protection, for a gambit of different things. And so then it started coming to me. Well, originally, when it came to me real fleeting, I just thought it was for beautification. Yeah. Like, oh, that'd be cute. Right? And so you gotta follow that intuition. It will lead you somewhere and bits and pieces will come to you mm-hmm. into the whole process. And so having that intuition is important. Yes. And the second the second piece of then listening to it, right? Because it might come in these small little pieces and then you can easily go into the intellect and be like well, yeah, but that's just random. That's just like a random occurrence that this like showed up like that. So I don't, I don't believe it. So it also takes that second piece of like leaning into it and having the faith of like, oh, that's a weird pattern that keeps showing up. I think maybe that might actually mean something that I should follow. Right, right. It, it that's that's true. Listen, listening is hard, man. Oh yeah. I'm hard. I'm hard headed. Same. I'm hard headed. I know a lot of people are hard because listening is hard, even when you know better. It's still hard to do, you know, it, that go back to when I was talking about consistency and practice, even if you think there's nothing, you know, we get up and brush our teeth every single day. We think nothing of it. Take us about less than five minutes to brush our teeth. It's a ritual. We do it every single day. Well, most of us do. I <laughs> hope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> if you're out there with stank mouth, I need you to get it together. I'm not yeah. kissing that. I'm not. <laughs> But we, so, and it's, it's something, but it's important because if you don't do it down the line, the teeth going to fall out. You're going to have bad or, um, or um, gums, yep. gingivitis. 
and it, because it caused you pain and bleeding and all these things. And so we don't think about that, but we get up and do it every single day. And it takes us less than five min minutes. And it's simple and it's easy and it's quick, right? That's the same thing for your protection. You start doing it like you learn how to brush your teeth. That consistency, same thing about your intuition. If you start doing it like you learn how to brush your teeth and be consistent with it, then it's, it's, come, it's, it's second nature, our first nature, that when that free thing come, you listen and you move. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you don't ask yourself, this is the thing, because everyone's like, oh, I don't feel like doing it. It's like, you never sit and ask yourself, do I feel like brushing my teeth tonight? No. You just move because you know, you know, Nike, right? right? You just do it, right? You just go. Yeah, right. You just do it. And yes, it's been ingrained in us from the time we was little, right? But the type of toothpaste you use hasn't. The type of toothbrush you use hasn't. I'm sure your regimen of flossing and all those other things that you may do wasn't. Your, when you was younger, your mama gave you a little toothbrush and use whatever toothpaste you put on your little stick and you could get on and brush your teeth and that's about it. But everything you do now is something that you picked up and implemented into your ritual, right? You know what I'm saying? Same thing with you washing your face. You know, some people don't wash their face every day. It's okay. I'm not saying you have to unless you wear makeup. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still a ritual. Right. You know what I'm saying? You you put the cleanse on your face. You may put some uh uh toner, toner, uh, what you call it to make your skin soft. Oh god. Moisturizer? Your moisturizer, but no, uh, I use this I use this Fenty thing that you take and you put it on before you go to bed and you wake up in the morning. That's it. I forgot Ooh, to fancy. <laughs> I forgot what it's called, but it makes your, your, your skin soft and it helps with aging. Serum? You know, yeah, I think it's a, it's a type of serum. You know, uh, me all these fancy me. words. <laughs> right. You know, you, you forgive me. Um, but um, so you, it's a rich, it's, you know, a regiment that you do and you gather different things and you figure it out how to use it and you figure out what works for you and you keep at it, but you don't give up. Black people, black women in their hair. Yes. We do our hair every single day. Even if we don't do our hair to the full extent, which means we may not do a whole big fancy style, but we touch it, we put it back in a ponytail, we do something to we do a little bang real quick so that we could be looking decent. We, you know, we may spray it and moisturize it, then walk out the door. We may do a a a, 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 a dropping a, a, a wash and go. We do it every single day. It is a ritual that takes forever. That is not something that you could just do in five minutes. Even if you have short hair, it's going to take you still long unless you are really, really, you know, bald on the side. But even then you're going to moisturize it and you're going to brush it. You're going to do whatever. That's still more than five minutes. So if you can do that, then you can be consistent, right? And intentional about working and listening to your intuition and, and, and doing what it tells you to do, about working on your um, regimen on healing and protecting your mind, that's that feminine, right? And, and implementing those things and making and, and following your soup, whatever that is, you can do it. You say it's hard, yeah, everything is hard and everything has to start at a, at a, at a place. <sighs> But yeah, <sighs> that's all I got. That's yeah! all I got. That's, you know, <laughs> and it was beautiful. And I could feel like all of the intuition even coming through and what you were speaking and sharing here. So it's been extremely, extremely powerful. So I want to thank you for sharing all of your energy on this space and with all of the listeners. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I do have one question if you feel like there's nothing else on your heart that's really you want to say that I do ask everyone on the podcast. It's almost kind of like you said, the ritual pieces, right? It's the closing question of the experience. Yeah. All right. I'll hit you with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm ready. Let's do it. Uh, I ask everyone, what is one thing that you wish other people knew was more normal? Talking to yourself. 
I wish that other people knew that talking to yourself out loud is a healthy thing, is a good thing, and reality is a normal thing. And I wish that more people do it and make it normal. Um, and when I say talking to yourself, I am not saying have arguments, full-blown arguments with yourself, right? I am saying that speaking out loud your thoughts is okay. Yeah. Whether you're in a room full of people and they're listening or not listening, or if you're by yourself, right? Because sometimes, a lot of times actually, what's in needs to come out. Your your breath is a breath of life. This When you speak, that's energy that's leaving your body and traveling this whole world, right? And so when we speak, we're bringing that energy out of our bodies, right? We And that allows us to move things out of us, to shift things that's in us, to make space. And so by speaking things out loud or having those conversations or having those thoughts out loud, it is, can be healing, actually is healing, right? I say this all the time and I don't know, I forgot where I got it from, but I say this, I talk to think mm. or I think to talk, I always flip it sometimes. Sure, sure. I think to talk or I talk to think, which means that I talk out loud when I'm processing. So if I'm talking, if I make a phone call to you or to someone else, and I'm just talking about an idea, a thought, it's because I'm processing. If I'm sitting here and I'm working, I may be sitting here like, what did I do that? I don't know why I did this. Girl, what is going on with you? You know, I said, oh, that's a great idea. I'll make, because I'm processing, yes. right? When I go to the water or to go outside, I talk to the water and I talk to the trees, right? And even though I'm like, I'm talking to the water and trees, I'm really just talking out loud. I'm getting it out my system mm -hmm. so that I can make room for something new, mm -hmm. right? In order to, for me to give myself opportunities, I got to release the things that's holding me back. And sometimes I don't know what that is until I just, Say it, whatever it is on my mind. Yeah. Out loud. Well, that is like, why did I do that? You know, sometimes I feel, you know, that I'm just not good enough. I sh I sh why do I feel that way? I shouldn't feel this way. I just, those type of conversations, right? And people may think you're crazy for doing that, right? Let them. Yes. Let them. Right, because we're not gonna be perfect to nobody. So <laughs> no, them think what they want to think because you having that conversation like that, right? And saying, "Why did I think that? Why did I do that? Oh, did I mess up? Did I do it right?" And you know, I'm saying, "Oh no, I did that fine. I did that right." Because what happens is, and keyword I said in the beginning is, "Don't argue with yourself." Mm which means don't beat yourself up. Don't talk to yourself negatively, negatively. Don't talk down to yourself. Don't degrade yourself. Don't disrespect. That's what arguing is, right? It's, tr it's treating yourself unkind. Don't do that to yourself out loud, but process out loud, right? Yes. Talk out loud the, the things that you feel that is confusing you or frustrating you and then follow that up with things that, okay, well, you know, yeah, this is making me frustrated that I sat here and I did all these things. But you know what? That's okay. Because I can now do A, B, and C. And yeah, yeah. Because as you sit here and do that, you're getting that out. You start to have new thoughts. And say, oh, but I can do A, B, and C. And I can do this and this and that. You see what I'm saying? And you feel lighter. Yes. You feel lighter. So I will want people to talk to themselves out loud more and make it become normal. Yeah. Right? Now, again, no full-blown arguments where you yelling and screaming at yourself and calling mm -hmm. yourself names. None of that. That serves no purpose. That serves no purpose. But having conversations, speaking things out loud, holds power. Absolutely. Holds power. 
and it releases. Yes, so. yes, yes. Oh, you have shared so, so much wisdom. And I'm so thankful for your time and the energy that you shared here with speaking and sharing your message. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate you. This has been a lovely time. I don't talk a hold in your head. And so, you know, I like that. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. It's powerful. I need to hear it. I know so many other people need to hear it. And it's going to be changing consciousness, right? Like, that's the power of these conversations. Yes, I don't energy. penetrate your mind. Yeah. yeah. I don't penetrate your mind. That's that hole in your head. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I don't talk a hole in your head. I don't penetrate your mind and drop you a, a, some diamond pieces, hopefully, to somebody. We good. Yes. I consent. I consent. Consent, drill, baby, drill. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's episode, then leave us a five-star review wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you're a part of the Anarchist community, then follow us on Instagram or nominate a guest for the show by sending in a letter to modernanarchypodcast at gmail.com. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.